Hi there, I'm Leia. I'm just getting Mike on the phone here. <laughs> That's how we do. <laughs> hey, Mike, I'm going to have you on speakerphone. Join us. OK, so um, my name is Leia Tawil. I'm an artist and a curator. And on the phone, we have Mike Corey, who is my collaborator and also an uh, artist and curator. Mike, you want to say hi? Hello. Hello. Cool. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear you. OK. Can you hear him? Yeah. Cool. Sort of? Mike? OK. Um, so I think what we're going to start with, actually, before I launch into a uh, kind of a description of Arab experimentalism, which is what Mike and I will be discussing. I just wanted to glimpse our work together. We've been working together since 2006. And um, this is our sort of, like I would say, touchstone work called Atlas, um, which premiered at New York Live Arts in 2016 and has had some international uh, touring, which has been very interesting. So um, let's just play a, a few, like, less than a minute of it, so you get to uh, see what we do. Yeah, anyway. Sound? Sound. I'm just going to leave that playing um, while we talk. So, um, uh, right, you get the idea. So, <laughs> um, so they're just watching me roll over and over again, Mike, just FYI. Um, so uh, Mike and I operate in a field called Arab experimentalism. Um, what we're, what the two of us are mostly art articulating with our work is live art practices. So obviously there's um, a whole kind of um, intersectional field into like visual arts and written work and this whole thing. But we're going to just talk about the body and sound and space and time. So um, Arab experimentalism um, can be defined multiple ways. I'm going to define it as um, a field that narrates and accumulates uh, regional and diasporic realities and futures through transgressive arts practices. How's that? Um, let's see. One of the main uh, tenets of, um, of Mike and I's work and sort of the sort of the ethos of experimentalism from an Arab perspective, particularly as Arab Americans, as Mike and I both are, um, is uh, the premise of we own our narrative. So the idea that we own our narrative and we own our references is almost of utmost priority um, because of the way that our culture is narrated over and over again for us, and usually misnarrated for us <laughs> by people not from the community. So this idea that we can narrate ourselves is really important. I think that a lot of, I think that actually works um, hand in hand with a lot of uh, arts that are situated in diasporic communities, as was discussed earlier. So we've kind of layered up a discussion really beautifully today already about diaspora and narration and identity and, and also safety and visibility. Um, so I think I'll um, 
I think I'll start actually by asking Mike a question and then we can bounce around a bit. Um, so Mike, since they're watching Atlas, <laughs> um, I thought that it might be interesting to discuss like, how Atlas sits um, when it's performed in the United States versus how it's performed when it's performed abroad. Um, and sort of the, also maybe address the visibility of um, this like new, like a new Arab voice that we talk about a lot. Yeah, I think the work um, can be read in different ways depending on where we've performed it. Um, Leigh and I have performed this work uh, domestically here in the U.S. We've, uh, we've performed it in New York. We've performed it in San Francisco. We've also performed it in Berlin and Beirut. And um, it, it gets read differently depending on where we're performing it. Um, when we performed it in Berlin, um, it was very well received, and it was a largely, it was a, um, a sort of a Palestinian festival of arts in the diaspora, so it, it very much fit in with, uh, with the context of what was taking place there. Um, in Beirut, um, there's a lot of uh, politics at play, and it's um, a very avant-garde community in which we performed it, so it got read in yet a different way there. Um, and then in the, in the United States, it, um, it, it gets read even more so differently. Well-received, but some people try to, I think, take some time, or some of the audience tries to take some time, or curators for that matter, too, uh, to reconcile how it fits in with their narrative or their notion of what it means to uh, be an Arab artist. And I think sometimes it might be the case that people are looking, when they hear the word Arab, you know, they also might identify with a little bit more traditionalism or expect to see something like that. And although there are elements of um, uh, Arab arts and culture and that tradition in the work, they might not be overt elements to people. And so there's a reconciliation process that people um, may or may not have to go through to understand how it fits in with it. But that kind of goes back to uh, what Leigh was saying about Arab experimentalism and that it's very important for us to control that narrative um, and, uh, you know, be able to demonstrate the connection of how it fits in the lineage of history. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Sure. Uh, um, so... This, uh, this idea of also um, that was discussed earlier, inherency and inherited information. And uh, the idea that, you know, Mike and I both being sort of first, second generation Americans, um, Palesti he's Palestinian, I'm Palestinian and Syrian, um, that we have this information in our bodies that doesn't necessarily need to be um, legible on stage, and, and that I think is key to the practice. So the inherent knowledge that we have, whether we experienced it firsthand or ancestrally, um, is, is resonant in our body. Um, and so just placing the body and whatever else we need to say with it on stage redefines it. the Arab body, also defines Arabness in a way that does not have to, we don't, ha we don't take on the burden of explaining that to um, a willing or not willing public, we just jump ahead to knowing it and then moving into the work itself. Um, I think it's interesting to uh, state that um, the work by its very existence of Arab experimentalists, um, even just by its existence, actually challenges the narrative or can offer new representations to the conversation um, without having to, um, just in its existence and in the naming of the context. Um, and that's a really uh, thing that, that's a thing that I think is getting more visibility. I feel like um, there's a lot more um, attention and mm, subtlety in Arab representations on stage these days, like just of recent, and we can see that also in like um, visibility and um, recent funding. So Mike just received a Night Arts Award in Detroit, which is a pr 
prestigious grant that um, not only uh, was Mike one of the grantees, but of the 25 grantees, I think there were five um, night arts um, funded projects that were related to um, Arab experimentalism, and five out of 25. And w this was a coup, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's very exciting to see it come into play. Um, so Mike, I'm sorry we, we didn't get to hear from you again, but we're getting the, um, the tone that our minutes are over. Okay, very good. <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. everybody.